All right, welcome back, folks. We're still in social implications of computing, and now we're going to be talking about the economic, social, and cultural context of computing. So the first is, and I just love this, I love this picture, which says, uh, computing innovations influence and are influenced by economic, social, and cultural contexts in which they're designed and used. So what that means is, it's kind of interesting. Let me tell you a little story. So it turns out that your eye, the shape of your eye, your eye, really, if you kind of to look at it, is just a balloon of, of fluid. That's all it is. And how we, your prescription that you get is based on the fact that you take that balloon and it happens to live in a socket. And your socket could be shaped like this, very long, which means the balloon will fill it, and then your eye will be kind of flat, like a football. If your, if your socket, I'm exaggerating, obviously, is very short and narrow, the balloon will fill that, and your eye will be pinched this way, like a football that's kind of more like a cylinder this way. And so your prescription is based on the socket. So your eye just grows to fill the socket. Okay? That's how, that's how, that's how this works. Which is why if you have an astigmatism, you have usually a symmetric. So for me, I have a 5% five, 5 degree astigmatism, which means this eye is kind of squashed, squashed a little bit, squashed like this. But rather than squashed squash like that, and then tilted by 5 degrees here, my right eye, my left eye is squashed and tilted this 5 degrees this way. So it's kind of symmetric because faces are symmetric. So most people are symmetric with their astigmatism, okay? They're asymmetry. So what this says is you have a cost, you have an economic, social, and cultural context. That's going to influence the innovators. That's going to influence what people build, what people need. Do you need something? If, you're, if you have a, I was thinking of just a particular example, if you're living in a situation where you have power 12 hours of the day and 12 hours a day you don't have power, you're going to be designing an innovation around that constraint. That's going to constrain what you do. You then can't have a server running up all night. You, you can't have your mobile app might have the ability to go to sleep for 12 hours or not have something that's on, that needs to be on the whole time for that. Just a very small example of that context constraining and influencing what computing you, do, you have. And then the computing you have can then change your society, can change your culture context. All of a sudden I have, we have more ability to do tweeting and this. Maybe we have a little bit more free speech because now all of a sudden the government is being oppressive, but now we can each individually say, hey, you know what? There's a bad thing happening. Even though the, the government might be trying to shut down all the news things, there's something bad. The government's doing something bad. And they're trying to shut down all news things. Nobody can even report on this. Well, what if each of us individually has the ability to tweet about this and then go global with this? And this is, you've seen this happen. So that can inf the computing can influence the social. Now all of a sudden people know about this, and that's a big deal. So I'll talk about that in a second. So the first is, what facilitates this? What facilitates the ability to have that connection? Well, mobile, wireless, and network computing. The idea to be able to, you can have code anytime in your hand, a, a camera, a video recorder, that can then shift that data. It's not just local. It's not, I, people have had cameras for years, but they don't have the ability, they never, they never had the ability until recently, to record a video of something terrible happening and send it global instantly. So that's unbelievable. This is also coming from Blown to Bits, which talks about how powerful it is when things go digital. The moment they go digital, they can be replicated instantly across the world, and only when they go digital. So something that's special about being digital, and that's true here with the mobile access to all this computing and video and photography. Networks and infrastructure are supported by commercial and government initiatives. Examples of that are Google, some, some companies giving free Wi-Fi for the whole city. Google was famous for doing that a couple places. Google also tried to have fiber optics uh, to particular cities, Kansas City recently, I think in Austin, Texas, where they had some initiatives to give the whole city access to very cheap uh, fiber optic connection, which is really fast broadband internet. Okay? Also, you, you know that the government supports a lot of this, and in many countries, the government says, you know what, we're turning off the internet for a week. Bad things are happening. We've seen that recently. We, you know, within the last couple of years, countries have shut off internet. So sorry. We don't want bad stuff happening. We don't, want, we don't want data information getting out about that. So we're shutting up the internet. So you realize you're kind of in the hands of the folks who are running your systems, right? So that's, that's, you feel powerless in that sense. The innovation impact of social media and online access varies in different countries and in different socioeconomic groups. Wow. The innovation and impact varies in countries and socioeconomic groups. Certainly, right? Think about that. If you are a really bad, bad person, you're a terrorist, okay? And you want to recruit more terrorists. Wouldn't you use social media? Isn't that impacting how you, how you can succeed? Wouldn't you have a website to recruit more people to do this? Certainly, right? So there's, there's an issue of it's 
all this isn't used for good, certainly. Some people, some bad people are recruiting other bad people into their, into their arena. Um, you also have the idea that, as I said here, here's a picture from Arab Spring, the people also now have power, right? You can no longer have abuse in this country, uh, have abuse worldwide, if everyone has the ability to kind of film it and hold the people doing it accountable. So you have these, and what you build, what you decide to, the innovations you build certainly are, are affected by what's around you and what you can do. All those things are important. This is a really deep one. The global distribution of computing resources and issues, uh, uh, raises issues of equity, access, and power. So this image you see here is the global digital divide. Okay, so the bottom says this, groups and individuals are affected by the digital divide. Differing access to computing and internet based on socioeconomic or geographic characteristics. So that picture shows you a picture of internet number of computers per 100 people. And in the developed world, all the ones that are very dark, like the United States, Australia, the number of computers is in the, I think the range says, uh, it's above 60, I think 60 or 80, okay? Per 100 people, so that many computers per 100 people, okay? The ones that are very, very light, areas in, in uh, Saharan Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, four. The number is zero through four computers per, per person. So the internet is not getting to these wonderful people. And the internet could be so transformative in their lives, but often folks in these struggling countries are dealing with food and, 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 and drought and other things that are a lot more important than just what the internet can provide for them. But it's surprising what happens when you give access to people who are challenged. There are now stories, lots of stories of, particularly in South America, by giving mobile data, by giving farmers in, in remote locations access to their mobile phone, when they're making arrangements and selling their crops, they can find out what the price was in town. And the person comes to buy the crop, say, oh, oh no, no, wait, it's not, it's, you're, you know, your corn is not selling very well, I'm gonna undercut you and, and give you only this much money for your corn. They say, no, 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 look at this picture. This is the current price of corn in town, I'm charging you this. So that power, it, that, that, uh, that data is empowering. To have that allows them leverage when they're trying to make their sale, okay? There's stories of, I'm gonna show you now a video. This is from internet.org. This is Mark Zuckerberg's and others' Facebook initiative to bring the internet to the other 90%, right? So maybe 10% of the world is well connected, 90% is not really well connected, so it's bringing internet to the rest of them. So we're gonna cut to a video now and show you some clips from internet.org. 